Hi, I'm Spencer Green, and I'm here to talk to you about how you can increase your feature velocity and accelerate your time to market by reducing technical debt in practical ways. This video is based on my experience running engineering and product management organizations in both large and small companies. So we're here to talk about reducing technical debt as a way you improve velocity. If you're an engineering manager, you're well familiar with technical debt, most likely. If you're a business leader or a product manager, it may not be so familiar. So let's go for just a moment into what technical debt is and how it accumulates. When you're running an engineering team that's delivering product, you can deliver a certain amount of product per unit time. Let's say that your velocity is, or your capability, is to do 10 features per quarter. And over time, you are delivering those 10 features every quarter. So this is your velocity. And you'd like for that to be a constant velocity, or if you're adding resources or getting more efficient, you'd like for it actually to be increasing. So you can deliver more and more product every quarter compared to the past. So let's think about a hypothetical engineering organization that has, say, 10 units of capacity, meaning it can deliver 10 features, 10 deliverables every quarter. In a healthy organization, if you want to build for the long term, you should be using part of that capacity to enhance and maintain the underlying technology. And that allows you to have a foundation that will be stable over time and continue delivering features for your customers over time. You might have a ratio perhaps of 70-30. So of the 10 units of capacity, you might want to use three of that for what I would call engineering tasks, things that keep the system healthy and in good shape, and seven to deliver features to your customers. So that picture might look like this. We have velocity on the vertical dimension, and we have time on the horizontal. And you see that if you have a, a total capacity of 10, in this scenario, you would be using seven to deliver features for customers every quarter. You'd be using the remainder for engineering tasks. Now what happens is that in many companies, the business pressure and other organizational dynamics would cause folks to use more of their capacity to deliver features. There's a, an urgent customer request, there's a need from the business, you have to make the number for the quarter, and so the pressure would be, we need to do eight features this quarter, we need to do nine features, we need to do ten features. In a situation where your natural capacity is a total of ten, but really you ought to be using seven for feature delivery. Now in that situation, you might be running your feature delivery up here at, let's say, nine, and you can actually do that for some period of time. The business feels good because you're getting more features out the door, and you actually have some positive reinforcement happening that it feels like you're doing the right thing. However, what's happening during that period is that the system is becoming more and more brittle, and it's becoming more difficult to get work done because you've neglected some of the engineering tasks that are important to maintaining velocity over time. The analogy of debt comes in because the area here, this is the amount of time that you've been, let's say, overspending, over delivering features relative to what your capacity is, times the magnitude of that overspending. That's the amount of debt that you've accumulated. And the debt analogy is really a good one because what ends up happening in these situations is that you find your velocity declines over time. Not only do you have to pay back this debt, and what you would hope is that if you've borrowed for, let's say, two quarters, if you had, if you delivered nine features for two quarters, you've borrowed two features here, you borrowed two features here. So if you give back two for two quarters, then you would be back on track and you could get back to your natural velocity. But in fact, what happens is you end up having to pay back more than what you borrowed, and that's the interest concept which makes debt a useful analogy. So what happens in real systems is that oftentimes an engineering organization will borrow by delivering more features than its capacity really can support for a period of time until it becomes so difficult to develop new things that velocity drops and drops and drops. And at that point, even if you continue to borrow from your engineering capacity, from your engineering tasks, and not service 
the hygiene and maintenance of the system, you still can't keep up with the velocity that you want to. So commonly, you find yourself in a situation where you've delivered features over time and velocity has gone down. And now you're in trouble, right? So what are the things that people typically do? There's a couple of approaches that are taken. One is you try to pay back some of this debt gradually and over time. And what that looks like is this. Let's say you've reached a point here where your velocity is, continued, is significantly degraded. You would take some of that remaining velocity and actually use it to retire your technical debt. So the idea is that you would take your velocity even lower. And you can see this is going to be a very painful thing to do, but you're going to use this to do the engineering tasks that you failed to do over here. And your hope is that as you start to pay back that technical debt by reducing your feature delivery even further, that you will be, be able to bring your velocity back up over time. The other approach that people take is the Big Bang rewrite. That's where your system has become so difficult to maintain, so difficult to extend, that you really can't add features to it any longer in a practical way. And so you start a second team in parallel building a new system, and that new system you hope will begin back up here at a high velocity because you've essentially given up on the legacy system. So to catch up on your backlog of engineering tasks and retire technical debt, the practical approach that's worked in our situations is actually to add additional resources for a period of time to retire that technical debt for you. So what it looks like in the picture is this. This is our picture that we saw before. You have a natural capacity of 10. And let's say you find yourself here. So your feature delivery was in excess of what you could do on a sustained basis. As a result, you borrowed this black area here in terms of technical debt. And your feature velocity is now declining, and you find yourself in this situation. The blue area is a separate team that would come on board for a period of time specifically to work on this backlog of engineering tasks. It has to handle the normal amount of engineering tasks that are accumulating every quarter and also do some additional work to pay back the engineering tasks that you failed to do in the past. When you do that, then you find your actual feature delivery can recover and get back to its normal sustainable rate. There are many forms of technical debt. These are all the things that slow the engineering team down, make it more difficult to get new features developed for customers. Many of these can be effectively outsourced to a second team. And I've listed as some of them here, which are some of the most important. There's bug backlog, when you have accumulated defects in the system that you haven't addressed. Oftentimes, they rear their heads later, and they take up capacity, they take up time from your engineering staff, which is working to get new features developed. Test automation backlog is one of the most serious and most common issues where you don't have sufficient test automation, don't have sufficient test coverage, or your test suite takes too long to execute because it includes a lot of manual steps. You need to compress that to make your entire release cycle faster and let everyone in the team get more features done more quickly. Down version backlog is common in modern web systems where you may be using several different open source libraries, frameworks, front end libraries, and so forth. And it's desirable oftentimes to keep to the latest versions, but it's time consuming because things are not perfectly backward compatible. You need to rerun test suites, in some cases make changes because of deprecated features in these libraries. Uh, refactoring backlog, you may want to instantiate new APIs, you may want to make other sorts of refactoring changes in your code, which will make it more maintainable over time, make it easier to develop new features, and increase your velocity. Warnings backlog is one of my personal uh, bugbears, where you have static analysis tools, code coverage tools, anything which is inspecting your code, perhaps an open source scanning tool. These can generate hundreds to thousands of warnings, many of which are noise, and they get in the way every time you run the tool, get in the way of understanding the real information behind it. Now, most of these things you actually can effectively bring on a second team to address. What you need is someone who's particularly skilled in this sort of technical debt reduction backlog. 
once you've used this extra capacity to get caught up on your tech debt backlog in many areas, of course you want to keep up and not fall into a debt situation again. You really have two choices there. One is oftentimes the pain of falling into a low velocity situation will allow you to explain more effectively to management why you should manage your feature output to your natural capacity. The other choice, of course, is you can keep the second team engaged over time as an assistant to you to manage some of your engineering tasks and allow velocity to continue at the higher rate. Now, eInfo Chips has been delivering technical debt reduction projects for dozens of clients over a period of uh, nearly 20 years, and we would love to help you with your technical debt reduction projects. We also have a number of resources, white papers, blogs, and so forth, that have more information on the topic in general. You can visit us online at www.techdebtzero.com. Thanks for watching.